What's going on? Uh, this is another video I wanted to do and I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time. I think for a lot of folks that are on the internet watching YouTube videos about cameras and hearing about gear and getting excited about those kinds of things, one of the biggest things you're trying to do is find what camera works for you. And I think we do that in reading and listening to other people's opinions and thoughts and I think that kind of shapes, for better or worse, what we want to do. So if you're out there looking for a camera or you're watching this video and you just want to hear more about the camera, um, I want to spend just a little bit of time today looking at some photos that I've taken with this camera instead of me sitting here babbling on about why I like it or what I wish it had. Uh, and I also want to point out some things that I haven't heard out there uh, as much. So let's start with what is it that we're talking about. So if you've seen the title of this video, we're talking about the X100V. This is the 2020 uh, kind of premium compact point and shoot camera from Fujifilm. It was a camera that they put out pretty much in the midst of the pandemic and it was something that was long revered and long sought after by, by members of the community because the previous versions of this camera were just so good. The one thing that really stuck out about every single version of this camera that everybody universally did not like was the really soft close focus distance. And almost sometimes when the camera was wide open in F2, which I'm not gonna run through the spec sheet, but as you probably already know, this is an F2 camera, 23 millimeter fixed focal length. It's about a 35 millimeter equivalent. But at F2, typically as a, and I was a previous X100T owner, I would see, hey, <laughs> these images were a little bit softer up close. So when you do, due to the sort of wide-ish, you know, standard field of view, you kind of had to get a little bit closer to your subject. And nicely, the, the camera would focus pretty closely. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it did a really good job. The problem is it would kind of halo, it would kind of get really soft, but ultimately it was still an amazing camera. When they came out the X100F, which was the version before this camera, the fourth version, that still exhibited much of the same issues, newer sensor, but still you know, some of those issues. So this camera coming out solved that. And I think that's something that a lot of folks are like, hey, it's a great camera, but they're not pointing out how sharp this lens is and just how close it is to the 23F2 from Fuji. But I would say the 23F2 from Fuji has plenty of problems. I'm currently not an owner, I've sold it um, but last year because it was just one of those lenses I hated using because of that close focusing issue. I couldn't really trust it out in the field, but I've moved on to the new 23 millimeter 1.4, which is a phenomenal lens. Maybe I'll make a video about that someday. But going back to this camera, you've heard all the amazing things about it. I'm not gonna go through that, but I wanna let you know that this lens is super sharp. It focuses relatively closely and it gives you some really great results. Obviously the other big addition to this camera is the flip screen, right? Having that two-way tilting screen is really nice. Now, don't know why they weren't able to add the hinge in here to get it going up the third way, but it sits flush with the camera, which is really nice, right? So like you get that nice flush uh, view to it. And sometimes I even forget to take out the, the, the display because I'm like, Oh, I forgot that it actually will adjust. I'm so used to the old one. But I'm gonna show you some photos here in just a moment of what I've taken with this camera over the past couple years, um, going on three years with this camera. I wanna talk about some of the issues I've had. Um, one of the biggest ones, and I don't know if the video is gonna really show up here, but underneath the ISO dial, I'm gonna try to get the light perfectly there. It's hard to see, but where that ISO dial is right here, there's actually some, some liquid in there. I don't really know what that's from. I took it to a party once, which is, Really stupid, don't bring your premium Fujifilm gear to a party. Uh, set it on a table, picked it up, noticed it was a little sticky. Someone probably spilled beer or something on it, I don't know. But that now is kind of in there. And again, I don't know if that comes out on the video, but the other thing is the focus ring here has some issues too, it's a little bit sticky. Um, over time I've kind of WD-40 a little bit and it's a lot better, but you can still kind of tell it's not stuck. Other than that, the camera's held up really well. I hate how dirty it gets on top here. Um, see if this will be able to come through in the video. Uh, just the dust that travels in there is really crappy, but in terms of the hardware, it's an amazing camera. It feels really good in the hand. Um, you can see that I have this um, square hood on there. This is a cheap, uh, I think it's by a company HO, KE, I don't remember, I'll link it below. Really, really cheap, cool square hood that's not 80 bucks like the real one. So let's look at some pictures of this, or you know, what I've taken with this camera and I wanna really show you know how important it is. All right, so let's look at some photos from the X100V. Again, I'm only gonna choose, I don't know, 20 or so. And these are not my best work over the past, you know, two, two and a half years. But I wanna be clear that this camera, again, 
is just going with you a lot of places, right? So you're going to take pictures of things that maybe you don't think are incredible, but they're photos and they were moments in time that you enjoyed. So starting off here, uh, really just street photo, right? I'm walking down the street. I was like, what a bizarre kind of setup, right? We got this construction site and house in the background and this nice Mercedes with newspapers underneath. And again, the colors that come out of this sensor, I mean, you've heard me wax poetic about on other videos, but you know, Fujifilm has the best colors in the game. I mean, there's no no other you know way to describe that. So a lot of fun. This next image here, we've got a foggy morning in Newport Beach. You can see kind of the breakwater here, but I, I thought this was interesting interesting you know again just a kind of photo that you would take and you know I, I i use lightroom and yes you can kind of see some of the artifacting and kind of um issues with the x-trans sensor but ultimately I mean, it's an incredible image it's fun it's it's kind of cool and you know normally what's here if you know is this is actually the pacific ocean and the breakwater goes out so it's kind of this this ominous image and again something that you're just taking when you're walking down the street if you have a family or if you have a young child i mean th there's no better camera right I, I i would take last fall um you know walks with my daughter and and just the kind of fidelity that you're getting out of it and the, and the moments that you can capture are really fantastic the colors that come out of it are, are playful and fun and it's it's just a really great camera to have with you at all times uh you know th there was even nights when in the winter i was really bored and there wasn't any good video games out or whatever and i had finished my work and would kind of walk down the street to beach boulevard here in huntington beach and just start doing some long exposure right and it's a kind of a you know typical thing and long exposure is not setting the bar any higher but it kind of saw this ambulance go by and did a long exposure of it it's just the camera's with you it's just unbelievable that this kind of fidelity i mean even look at the liquor sign here i mean we're in it probably 200 percent here and it looks fantastic so really 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 great sensor that's in here and by the way if you're finding this video interesting useful at all or you're vibing with it whatever please hit the subscribe button click the like button you know the drill would help grow this channel really appreciate that Back to the photos. You know, dynamic range, nighttime shots, they're always gonna look good. Um, this is handheld, probably, you know, 1 30th of a second or so. And, and it's just a really, really good image. No Ibis, if you've got a steady hold, I usually use a, a strap around me to kind of, uh, you know, keep it steady, but it's, you can get some great results. I mean, look at the windows up here, pretty sharp, blown out here, right? So you're gonna get some of that dynamic range. Not perfect, but dang, pretty good. You know, street stuff, I, I always went on the Huntington Beach Pier and did some street work, and it's just fun, you know, and, and the camera's with you, and I, I would say, you know, this lens resolves detail pretty well for the size. You know, I would definitely say that the 23 millimeter one four that I have on my X-H2S now is going to provide a lot better photo, but do I want to bring that with me, right? That's That's the question. Again, families, I mean, I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of photos of my daughter kind of sitting in her car seat in her stroller when she was much younger. And, um, you know, you kind of see the, the progression of time with this camera, right, when she was even younger and maybe a little bit older and bigger. It's a really cool thing to document your life around you. And even just walking down the street, like, hey, this is a really cool dumpster, right? And, you know, we are lucky here in California, definitely, you know, paradise, 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 but just cool shot and something fun and that I would have gotten on my phone, right? You wouldn't have gotten this dynamic range and this 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 feeling and i would drive to work early in the mornings and take the sunrise and you know just some of the gradients you get out of this camera i mean just look at the detail here you know i've added some grain for taste you know and we've lost some detail here but i mean out of, this is out of my moving car by the way through the windshield so um you see some of that windshield down here in the left but pretty fantastic you know and as my daughter got got older it's like that's the camera i want to grab because it's right there right i don't want to grab my phone because i want to show depth i want to show quality i want to show clarity and as she got older when put headphones on her one day and was like hey it's super cool like let's take a photo and it it comes out pretty cool and even things like bath time with kids you know you yeah it's like do i want to go grab my whole kid or do i just want to grab my x100v you know that's that's why it'll be hard for me to ever sell this camera maybe i'll give it to my daughter but you know definitely on like photo walks and places i've been it's it's kind of a no-brainer if i want to travel light to bring this camera you know i i would say again with the 2314 you're going to get much better resolution here on the uh x trans 5 sensor at least even the high resolution version that's in the xh2 and xt5 but dang not bad at all and will stand the test of time at 26 megapixels i i do believe that this this camera and sensor will 
and even some of these high key scenes where you know I'm on the beach in Huntington Beach and it's super sunny outside and I've got a guy flying by I'm just walking you can see some of the environmental haze I mean the image quality is awesome right and it's just a fun camera to have I would go into the, the the pier quite a bit and kind of do some dynamic range testing. This is, again, a super, super bright day with some haze in the distance and environmental elements weren't too kind to me, but really happy with what this camera is able to put out, right? We see a little bird flying here. And it's, it's, it's always nice to have that with you because you're going to get that kind of dynamic range, right? You're going to get fun shots that, you know, I, I could have spent more time in Lightroom and played around with this more and gotten more detail out of the highlights and shadows. But yeah, again, for a four, two to three minute edit on this photo, I was you know, really happy with that. You know, and I've even done event photography with it, you know, going to an event, walking around, capturing people, you know, certainly lighting is challenging with an F2 lens. I, I really think that F1.2 lenses are much better suited for indoor photography, but F2, you can definitely get away with it if people aren't moving too much. Um, you know, even shooting from a 23 millimeter lens all the way up on a, on a stage here, you know, with some CIO executives talking, it's, you know, even at a lower shutter speed, you know, you get a little bit of blur in the crowd, but for folks that are talking to far away, you know, it's, it's a pretty dang good image. And again, you get that, that depth of field and just again, everyday shots, walking around, shooting a palm tree like this. It's like, I get blown away by the, the level of detail on this camera. It's just so good. I've done a lot of landscape with this camera too. I know it's not really well suited to that, but I mean, the level of detail is is pretty fantastic for being such a small camera. I've been so happy with it. You know, and I'll, I'll leave it on this photo here, which is nothing special, just a photo of my daughter, but you know, taking these photos of your family and, and people that you know and people that you love and memories that you wanna have, that's what photography is all about, right? Printing photos and, and having these photos and sharing the photos, it's, it's fantastic, but you know, again, having this conversation with my friend, um, recently is, you know, Hey, you know, do I need this camera with me at all times? I, I, I would hope you do. And I, and I think you do. So yes, get, take photos, get happy with it, learn photography. And X1 interview is an amazing camera to learn on, albeit it's very expensive, but again, you get an amazing portable kit and I don't think there's anything else like it in the market. So yeah, that, those are uh, some of the photos. Um, leave you with some final thoughts. So yeah, I hope these images have kind of given you a good look at what this camera can do. And in the past several years of me owning it, I've been so happy with it. Mainly, obviously, you can see lifestyle portrait stuff that I've done with my family and friends. But I think where this camera's real strong suit is, is that you can carry it with you anywhere. And that's the biggest thing. And I think you'll see some people online talk about that, but I don't think it's talked about enough. So I want to leave you with this thought of if you had a camera like this that you can bring anywhere. I'm filming this on the X-H2S and the Viltrox 13 not really going to carry this everywhere, right? It's a big camera. It's a little bit heavier on the heavy side. And comparatively to other cameras that are just as capable, it's obviously a lot smaller and a lot lighter. But a camera like this, imagine, right? You take it with you where you want to go and really get to enjoy it. And I think that's the big selling point for this camera is taking it with you. I was having a conversation with a friend today. Before I go, I'm going to, I'll share this. And he was saying that his daughter's, you know, a year and a half going on two years old. And he's really frustrated with the fact that he hasn't taken enough photos of her in the last year and a half, almost two years. And I said, why not? He's like, oh, I just use my phone and I'm not happy with a lot of the images. And he's a photographer, has a big kit. It's an old, you know, Canon DSLR that he uses a lot, has invested a lot of time and money into. But I said, hey, imagine you had something like this. Imagine the pictures that you would have got. And who knows, maybe in 10, 20 years, our kids and our friends will have 8K displays, right? And so these phone images won't look that great, but uh, 26 megapixel sensor on this is fantastic. It's an amazing camera, definitely should buy. Even if the new one comes out next year, who knows? I, I think it's still worth it. So X100V, that's my review.